Alrighty, we're recording. Camera, audio, all set. Welcome to the Slowpoke Travel Cod Contest. I'm the winner. What? You're listening to our podcast, the Slowpoke Travel Podcast. We hope you enjoy our podcast. The podcast starts right now. Slowpoke Travel Podcast with Buck and Camera Girl. Ta-da! This is the Slowpoke Travel Podcast. I'm Buck. I'm Camera Girl. And today's episode is going to be about the Smoky Mountains. Yeah because we're in the Smoky Mountains doing a house sit. Uh, but Camera Girl's taking the lead on that because she's got all of this internet prep going on. That is not true. I'm not trying to build up expectations. I was gonna say, okay, go ahead. But I will start off with our commercial, which is a plug for ourselves. So if you go over to patreon.com slash buck and camera girl, uh, you can support everything that we do. Uh, over there we've got a a food channel on YouTube. We've got a food website. We've got a slowpoketravel.com, this travel uh, YouTube channel. Now we've got this podcast. So we've got a PayPal link. We've got a Patreon link. If you want to support us that way, that's muy fantastico. But if you just listen and uh, thumbs it up and share it, that's fantastico too. You might hear a doggy in the background because we are house sitting and uh, the dog is out. The dog is trying to play with tadpoles. He's doing that he's something. Discovered. He's got something very complicated going on he's, over there. He's. Uh, we wish he, he's we could show him fun. to you. Yes, he he's really is. Probably going to survive. Oh my lord, we'll that see. tail is just going. They're very small tadpoles. Thanks for everyone who listened to our first uh, podcast episode. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through some of the comments here. Because cool. I think I want to start off the podcast uh, with comments every week. We'll figure out a, a format here. I did mention in the last podcast some reference to where we might be staying in a hostel if we were trying to be El Cheapo. And I love hostels. But Perry commented, that's so funny, quote, we would be staying at a hostel talking to Rick and Mary about their majors. Because young people, because if we stayed in a hostel, we would be the oldest people there. But now there are hostels that cater to the elderly. And to the would... elderly? What are you talking about? Cater to the elderly? I think you're well, thinking of a nursing home. That's not a hostel. No. no. We put people your grandma. With, we people, didn't put her in a hostel. People with gray hair and wrinkles, which we now fit in that category, there are hostels that cater to more elderly people. Don't say elderly. That bugs you a lot, doesn't Elderly it? Elderly people aren't really traveling, except what, for to okay, go to the bathroom. Okay, if we were in, if we were in a shelter with a bunch of twenty-year-olds, you don't think they'd think of us as elderly? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Young people have a perception. I and mean, and that's where this whole comment started from. If you're in your twenties and you see somebody whatever. in their mid-thirties, you think they're old. Uh, it's usually twenty years older, don't you think? I don't know. People think that we are ancient, and man, they are wrong. <laughs> we are vibrant. We are immature. We are immature. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Perry left some nice comments. Uh, Rob, over at Rob's Homemade Life, one of my favorite YouTubers. Oh, yeah. He says, more can opener. Because you mentioned about the can opener, about the in-house sits, how you find new and interesting <laughs> things, and your example was a can opener. We do discover yeah. things in a house sit. Like this particular house sit right now has a Roomba. You know, oh, one of those robot Lord. vacuum things, which I always and saw the commercial for, and I thought, that is ridiculous. Oh, Buck is in love with this toy. Oh, yeah, the Roomba. I'm a Roomba fan now. I really like it. Yeah, the dog and I have to leave the house. I feel like he, I'm... Because he's the... like, I want to run the Roomba again. Okay. I feel like I'm living in the future when oh, I turn that Roomba yay. on. You can see my future is very narrow. <sighs> but Rob said that maybe I should do a Kindle book on house sitting, and I actually started writing a house sitting book. You did. And I got quite a little bit done. It was going to be based, basically, it was our correspondence for landing a house sit. But like most things I do, I love to start projects. I have so many projects started. And eventually, I will finish maybe one out of ten projects that I start. Uh, here's a comment from Lynn Novak. Lynn says, I love CG's number one pro. You said that the number one thing was meeting people. Yeah. I said because you almost get a head start because you're meeting them in their home where their books, their, you just learn a little more about them. Yeah. It wasn't just meeting new people. And that was your number one, and my number one was that it saves us money. Right. Which made me sound really cheap. Nah. Uh, but I am really cheap, and that's good because it's, it's my financial savvy that keeps this machine well-oiled 
and heading into the future. You just keep being delusional. <laughs> it helps you out, buddy. That's it. Minnie Gibson says, I am too old to know what a podcast is. If this <laughs> is it, I like it. Well, we just discovered podcasts. Well, podcasts aren't that old. How, long, how old are podcasts? Maybe 10 years? Yeah. The joke is that everybody has a podcast. We are pretending that this podcast is going to be about the Smoky Mountains because we're house and pet sitting in the Smoky Mountains. Here are a couple of facts. The Smoky Mountains are a sub-range of the Appalachian Mountains, which are sometimes called the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now, I can tell you right there, I don't know that I have looked that closely at the geography to understand that. I think I thought that Blue Ridge and Smokies were synonymous, and they're not. Yeah, I don't know, but I know I don't know if, if the Smokies are part of the Appalachian Mountains. I don't I don't yes. know any of that stuff, but I do know that the Appalachian Trail goes through the length of the Smoky Mountains because you and I have hiked that section of the Appalachian Trail together. Yes. The Smokies cover over 800 square miles and comprise about 187, 187, 187,000 acres along the North Carolina and Tennessee borders. So there, now we've, there's two facts. Well, three. I want fun facts about yeah, the Smoky Yeah, yeah, Mountains. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I don't but, want math. Here's your first quiz. How do you spell Smoky? S-M-O-K-E-Y. There's not an E unless you're saying the Smokies, which is its nickname. Okay. It's S-M-O-K-I-E-S, -E and it's a common misconception. And I'm sure you could go back through the derivation of the language and when the Cherokee called it different things. The Cherokee also called them the Smoky Mountains. But I think when they said it, they went Smoky Mountains. Oh, they have another name for it obviously. The mist. They were talking about the mist over the mountains. Here it is. The Cherokee called the mountains Choconage. Choconage? Probably butchering that. Place of the blue Probably. smoke. <laughs> Your Cherokee's a little rusty. I think you might be butchering it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they called it Tatanka. No, no, no. Oh. You failed your first quiz. You're going to be able to redeem yourself because there's one more quiz. All righty. <laughs> what is your first memory ever of the Smoky Mountains? You and I going to the Smoky Mountains. You and I went to the Smoky Mountains in a car trip in... Two cars. Yeah, Two was, it, was it the late 80s? It was the yeah. late 80s. Yeah. You and I first went to the Smoky Mountains over 30 years ago because we were living in Florida and that was an easy drive. But you had already gone whitewater rafting. Yeah, but we used to go whitewater rafting in North Georgia on the uh, Chattooga River, which but is the same the, river they filmed Deliverance on. But also the Ocoee. The Ocoee in, River. I and that's in that. Tennessee. We used to go on the Ocoee and the Chattooga. You and I, we went up to the New River yes. in West Virginia. Oh, that's right, because they had the big old flies, because we had to jump in the water to get away from the black flies that were biting us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember movies that were in the Smoky Mountains. What movie in the Smoky Mountains? See, and I was trying to remember it. See, you don't have remember. a memory of the, look at you, you don't, you're making it up. Oh, you're but just I wanted remembering to have... some mountains. That's got nothing to do with the Smoky Mountains. No! The Smokies look different than the Tetons, look different than the yes. Pyrenees, than look different. The Pyrenees? You know. When was the last time you looked at the Pyrenees? Pretty National sure the Pyrenees Geographic. is a dog. Aren't Pyrenees like, isn't that a dog you can put a saddle on? <laughs> so, when did the Smoky Mountain National Park become a park? I don't know. Was that one of Teddy Roosevelt's things? I would say in the 1940s. I didn't have any concept until I was looking things up. Well, what's up. the answer? President Calvin Coolidge, in 1926, signed a bill that provided for the establishment of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and the Shenandoah. But it wasn't until 1940, and it was Franklin D. Roosevelt that officially did the, ah, oh, you are now a park. The more I looked into it, it's really inspiring stories about a lot of businessmen, but a lot of people from Tennessee and North Carolina that just came together and just said, yeah, this is worth it. Well, as you can imagine, there were some people on the land, and so you have to, in theory, negotiate. What's, Maybe, that, what's that called when the government comes and takes your land? I don't know. Uh, imminent domain, something like that. Yeah. Because I think they had some issues with that on the Appalachian Trail. 
when they were trying to establish the Appalachian Trail as a, as a continuous trail, yes. you know, they would move it around and, you know, they would try to negotiate with some people. Sometimes some people didn't want to negotiate and you sort of, it's you against the government and that's a tough position to want to be in. But as far as the Smoky Mountain goes, when it was established as a park, let's go back to how correct I almost was. It was right about the decade and I was right about Roosevelt. I just had the wrong Roosevelt. The, well, that, that's a big deal. It's Roosevelt. But I yes, think I should get partial credit. There was a big push, the beginning of auto clubs like what's now AAA, but there was a big push from those people because automobiles were becoming really popular and the Smokies were seen as this place that, yeah, there was elevations, but it wasn't as, not treacherous, um, not as steep as in the West. So that was another big push to get the Smoky Mountains going as a national park. You know, some people at some point, okay, you need to move. Well, there are elderly people who've been there for generations. And so sometimes they gave them lifetime leases but nobody else could live on their land, and then it was going to go to the government, and sometimes not so great. So anyway, that was sort of depressing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, don't you have any good Smoky Mountain stuff? You're just harping yes. on the elderly left and right. <laughs> the Smoky I'm Mountain not. Park was established when the government came and kicked people off of their home, unless they were elderly, and then they said, well, you don't have long left, so we'll wait for you. Okay. Anyway, let's go back to, then to the Appalachian Trail. Yes. The Appalachian Trail goes along the uh, the mountain ridge through the, right. the Smoky Mountain National Park. And I've hiked through it twice. Once in 1990, I think, which is more than 30 years ago. Wow. And then you and I did a trip in 2012. The Appalachian Trail goes through the Smoky Mountains for 71 miles. And I loved it. When you and I went through it together on that trip, I loved it. The first time I did it, I didn't like it at all. Because of the... The fences? Because of the regulations. Because the Appalachian Trail, which is like a couple thousand miles long, right? And it, and it travels through, you know, the eastern section of the United States along the Appalachian Mountains. But then when you're, and you can, you can camp in all different areas along the Appalachian Trail. It's very loosey-goosey. Right. You have to follow some rules and regulations, but there's a lot more flexibility until you get in the national park. And then because it's a national park, you've got to fill out an itinerary, you have to camp in very specific places. When I hiked through it in 1990, you had to stay in shelters, which were, you know, every seven or eight miles along the trail. But the shelters, they all had kind of chain link fences across the front of them to protect the people from bears and to protect the bears from people. You know, they used to joke and call it the human zoo because you would get in there and sometimes bears would come down and, you know, you would have to, you know, you'd be trapped in the shelter. Now, we went in 2012, they didn't have the chain link fences and They anymore. did in one. They did in one shelter. We didn't end up staying there. There was still a chain link fence in one. But, of course, that had to happen because there were enough people that weren't keeping clean enough campsites that the bears started associating people with food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, we like hung our food seed. all along the Appalachian Trail. You but in the Smoky great. Mountain National Park, you have to hang your food. Yes. They have poles set up so you can go hang whatever provisions you brought so that you're not keeping them with you because, you know, they know that bears are going to be attracted to the food and they don't want to Yeah. the bears to associate people with food. We were at one um, shelter, in fact, there was a great group of people. seems like there were eight people. Yes. I mean, it wasn't, we and didn't there go was when it was a ranger. most crowded. There was a park ranger there, too. Exactly. There was a bear that came up. The bear had a, a tag already in his ear. I think there was four steps to the process, but basically yeah. if a bear got too comfortable with humans, they had to relocate it. Yeah. And that bear had already been relocated once. Yeah. And it was, I think he had two more steps, but it if the bear came back again. They were going to try to t take him further away. Then he would have to be euthanized. Do you remember two? How many bears did we see in the Smokies when we went? I'd have to look at my diary. Yeah, I don't remember either. I think we saw a few. The thing is, a lot of people don't know, if you want to spot a bear when you're backpacking along the Appalachian Trail, one of the best places to look is in the trees. They climb trees. A lot of times when you see a bear along the trail, it'll look just like a monkey. They're not that big. And you'll be walking along in the morning, and you'll look up, and you'll just see a bear hugging a tree looking at you. You did mention that a few times, but I don't remember ever having that experience. You probably walked under several bears. Oh, probably. I walked by a lot of snakes. 
That's true. We did see too many snakes. Not too many. Hey, listen, were, one is too many. And they were rattlesnakes, too. Exactly, and way too many. So, how many states does the Appalachian Trail go through? That's not but a Smoky Mountain question. I think it's 12 states. It's 14. 14. Wow, you are close. Yeah. I've hiked yeah. every state. Except the Appalachian all Trail, of Maine. Except for Maine. I have never stepped on the Appalachian Trail in Maine. Closest I got was Gorham, New Hampshire. Gorham, New Hampshire, it's like, it's a stone's throw from the main state line, but I didn't go past there. Hit me up with some more Smoky Mountain facts. All right, you ready for another quiz? I'm always ready for a quiz. What is, this is multiple choice, what is the biggest source of the mist or smoke of the Smoky Mountains? A, pollution. B, dragons from Middle Earth. C, the forests themselves. Oh, I would say it's the forests themselves. Yes. Water cools and forms the blue-tinged mists you see rising over the mountains. Forms clouds. It comes back. And yes, basically the forest itself is... So I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. I got the answer. Yeah. But as it turns out, apparently pollution is now um, changing the Because of all the those texture. auto clubs. Okay. What would you say is the tallest peak in the Smoky Mountains. Okay. Can you can you make that question a little bit longer? <laughs> There's a reason I'm asking it like this. Okay. Is the reason to make the podcast unnecessarily long? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> no. What is the highest peak in the Smoky Mountains? Uh, is it Klingman's Dome? Yes. I know that because the Appalachian Trail goes over that, so I I'm aware of that. Well, but I was trying to make it so you would answer it correctly. It is not the highest mountain in huh? the Smokies. The highest peak and the highest mountain are two different things. Isn't that interesting? Mount Leconte. Leconte? How do you say that? Leconte. I've been Leconte, on Mount Leconte. I've spent the night there. Which Nigeria. is the tallest mountain from immediate base to the summit in the mountain range. It's the tallest mountain, so it's not the highest. Right. So the tallest mountain and the highest peak are not the same. I don't know. I Look think at that. You're just you're just frustrated because you never went to law school. I think. <laughs> but anyway, I've stayed on Mount Lacan because they have uh, some cabins up there where you can go. Yeah. And you have to reserve it, and you go up there and you stay, and it's almost like a bed and breakfast sort of situation. Um, and they cart all of this food up there, and they have employees that live and work up there during the summer. And you go up there and you book a cabin. Yeah. And it's sort of like maybe a bunkhouse situation, and then they feed you breakfast and blah, blah, blah. It was very nice. Anytime that you can climb a mountain and somebody else has brought the food up there for you, it's a nice experience. Did you know that the Smoky Mountains are considered the salamander capital of the world. 30 different species of salamanders. And you know, when I looked at this one, I went, mm. Your Smoky Mountain facts are weak. They're just not, how many murders have there been in the Smoky Mountains? You know what? I actually looked at that and I did not include that. Huh? Although I understand crime's a big deal for podcasts and it's a big. <laughs> I'm just so, saying it makes, it makes it kind of spooky. How many murders have there been? You know, in the there Mountains? haven't been a whole lot. But there have been. Well, I would have guessed that there haven't been a whole lot. All right. Let me look that up while you're gabbing on. Murder mountains. There's more than 800 miles of hiking trails. How's that? Um, That is probably fewer than I thought there was going to be. Somebody, before we went on the Appalachian Trail, gave me a book about all of the bad things that had happened on the trail. There were terrible things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, I like... think when I hiked, I think in 91 mm. or 92, there were there were a couple of murders on the trail the year I hiked. And in fact, they caught the guy like 70 miles from me heading down the trail toward me. He had killed a couple of people in a shelter there. But yeah, there's a, a lot shelters along the way when anything bad has happened. Then they, they kind of build up a lore around that. I think there was one shelter near a Watauga Dam where supposedly some lady had been axed by some crazy guy on the trail. And so that was a thing. Because then they say, you know, the shelter is haunted and sometimes you'll know you'll hear the ghost of whatever, whatever happened. And whenever you're out in the woods, 
you're going to have those kind of stories, those kind of spooky campfire stories. There is a three-book series, The Smoky Mountain Murder. Yeah, it's a three-book series? Yes. Called The Smoky Mountain Murder. Starting about in the 1969, you know, a farmer and his wife were murdered by four drunken hunters and the dogs, the horse, the two fawns were killed. They killed the dog? When three dogs. So yes, there's been murders, but no, I did not pull up that fun fact. Okay, all right. Well, as long as we know how many hectares or acres there are in the Smoky Mountains, <laughs> I think that's, that's more entertaining. <laughs> how many acres was it? I forget. Okay, look, there's 2,900 miles of streams. <laughs> I guess you don't want that one either. Mountaintop temperatures rarely reach above 80 degrees. Now people want to know that one. Now, I'm, heat. I'm surprised to hear that. I mean, all of the mountains in the Smokies, I think, have Shen a tree Kohone. line. There aren't a lot of balds in the Smokies. Shenkohonehe. <laughs> what is that? Is that more Cherokee? I don't know. You've intimidated me now. I don't think I'm going to tell you any more of my facts. Well, how many visitors are attracted to the Smoky Mountains every year? Because now it's summertime. I'm sure the Smoky Mountain is packed. And we are near the Smoky Mountain National Park. But we are not going to go to the Smoky Mountain National Park. We've been there a few times, but we're house and pet sitting, so... Which is fantastic. We, we're getting the best of it without the crowds. Yeah, yeah, so we're kind of in the foothills of the Smokies, but because of our responsibilities here, we can't go to the park. Great Smoky Mountain National Park in 2020 was the third most visited park. So that was even in 2020, and that was when things were backed way off. You couldn't go to as many of the campsites and all that. There were 12.1 million visitors and the first most visited national park was the Blue Ridge Parkway. Well there are so, so many population centers here along the east coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's easy for folks to get to. What do you think is the most beautiful national park that you've ever been to? I think for different reasons I'd say different things. That morning that I got you up for the sunrise over Bryce Canyon that was amazing. That and then even when we walked yeah. through, of course, there's a lot Are out those west. those called the hoodoos? Those little Look stone at you. Yes. structures? Nice Yeah, job. Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. Gorgeous. I think the prettiest oh. one I've been to is Glacier National Park. I have heard of so Phenomenal. much about but that. But it's not near a population center. You know, it's up in Montana. I think it's in Montana and in Canada. It's right up there on the border. Yellowstone's not near any population centers either. But a lot of people make a special trek there. But you have to make an extra special trek to get to Glacier National Park. But those are phenomenal. Like the Smokies, I mean, we've gone a few times, but it's because it is sort of convenient for us since we live in the southeast. And when you get that touch of nature. But the mountains, the Smoky Mountains aren't as tall because they're older. That's I mean, why we aren't, as, we aren't as tall as we used to be. <laughs> well, the Smokies aren't hunched over. Yeah. They just are eroding. For a long time, I was 5'11". <laughs> People ask me, I'm 5'11". It's all on my ID. It's all 5'11". But yeah. I mean, I think the last time I measured myself, I was closer to 5'10". I've lost something. I think the cartilage in my knees has whittled away. I've lost about an inch of cartilage. Have you ever been to Gatlinburg? Yeah. Have you and I been to Gatlinburg together? We must have gone to Gatlinburg. But in exactly. Because it's kind of hard to drive up to the Smokies and not go to Gatlinburg. And I think we went through Pigeon Forge. We went through Gatlinburg. And I just remember it was a bit of... Gatlinburg is a real horror show. But, but it depends on what you like. I, I mean, mean, if you like cheese rama Well, yeah, they have putt-putt golf. They have... They got the thing where you can pretend skydive over a giant fan. They got Ripley's oh. Believe It or Not. They've oh, no, come on. That's fun. My brother and I remember in Jacksonville, to mankind. in Jacksonville, Florida, we went to the one, and we to this day, we what, must have Ripley's? gone when we were little. Yeah, Ripley's. And we still, every now and again, will say to each other, is that a man with a candle in his head? Yeah. Because, you know, you're going through and you're seeing all the wax things and you're listening to the stories. And, of course, they, they have uh, yeah. a narrator. But, of course, there's a loop. But how old were you? I don't know. Exactly. I mean, Ripley's Believe It or Not Maybe is the 15. most fantastic thing in the world until you hit puberty. I, I guess you probably hit it late. <laughs> you know. I never went to the one in, is it Orlando, where the house is turned upside down. Oh, the building is interesting. Is that because of tornadoes, Central no, Florida? No, they built it that way. Sometimes kitschy places are fun. If somebody is interested in going to the Smoky Mountain National Park, what might they care to know? 
Impart your internet wisdom. <laughs> My internet wisdom. Yeah. For the first time ever, all streams in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park were open for fishing on March 6, 2017. Man, when I was a kid, we used to go fishing all the time. You could just be driving around and you'd have your fishing poles in the car. And if you saw a place to fish, you'd just pull over right. and you would fish. Right. And you would but catch fish. Nowadays, people don't really do that. It's all private property, and there's not any fish in the streams anyway. And the West Coast is on Wee. fire. Wee. And when I was young. <laughs> what about pigs? Don't they have a problem with wild pigs in the Smoky Mountain National Park? I did not know that. I believe so. I think that there used to be wild pigs that hunters used to stock the forests for hunting season, and that over time the pigs kind of got out of control and they're not native to the area and they became sort of a uh, pest. Look at you. I believe so. Wild be hogs are not native to the Smoky Mountains. Any, anything to do with ham, I sort of have a vested interest. <laughs> there I'm are privy to pork knowledge. There are people in the Smoky Mountains that they're dedicated to hunting them because you're right, there's a problem. Look at you. I'm impressed. Okay, now you know how I love fireflies. So there are 19 species of fireflies that live in the Smoky Mash National <laughs> Park, including synchronous fireflies, which are the only species in America that can synchronize their flashing light patterns. Yeah. They have a lot of those in the Smokies. Also in Las Vegas. <laughs> I don't have any other facts. Do you, have, do you have any other? Well, yeah, there's plenty of other facts, but <laughs> but you don't have them. Do you have? Well, I, yeah, I've got them. But well, I mean, do you have any? Do you have any favorite memories of the Smoky Mountains? What about Charlie's Bunyan? Remember, we had pop tarts early in the morning on Charlie's Bunyan. And we got there, and there was no one else there. When That's usually right. it's so crowded. We were up at the crack of dawn. That's the thing with the Smoky Mountains that was and being beautiful. such a, a popular park. It is hard to go there in any of the areas that are special, and not be amongst crowds. Which is not all bad, because you're often around people who are also enjoying nature. Sounds all bad to me. But in the Smoky Mountains, we were not always in shelters with people. Because remember, the one place was raining, and so we just said, we're going to stay here another day. It was beautiful. And this, again, I don't, I don't, I don't think the that's true. In front of me. I don't think that's true. That was in the Smokies. I don't think so, because think in the Smokies, just before? you can't just decide to stay in a shelter another day. You have to fill out your itinerary. You have to keep to it. You have to be at this shelter on this night and this shelter the next night. You have to fill out a form and itinerary Isn't and deposit it. And I'm... then you have to have the tag on your pack. And then they have rangers, like we spent the night with a ranger, who kind of go along the trail and they check people's permits to make sure they're where they're supposed to be and that they've signed up. But if you are one shelter beyond or before, even the guy was telling us, you know, we give people some leeway because you can't always predict. Well, I mean, there's certainly a lot of leeway if you're a through hiker. You know, you might have hundreds of people starting. And, and at the very southern part, and especially when you're going through the Smoky Mountains, you still have a lot of people that haven't fallen off yet. So the trail can, be get, can get very congested at certain times of the year. Do you remember there was, a, in fact, Fontana Dam, we saw a poster for someone that played a ukulele that we had seen in a shelter somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And said, have you seen this person? Yeah, yeah we and met a guy and we basically saw him on a milk carton the next week. Exactly. Well, on a, well, yeah, I think on he a just, telephone pole. I think he just pole. had a family that was interested in knowing his whereabouts. Yeah, and, I think so too, but it was sort of like, oh. But he was fine. He was just doing his own thing, I yes. guess. The only problem I saw with him is that he was playing the ukulele. In the shelter. Well, anywhere you play tent. the ukulele is a problem. How much does it cost? To go into the Smoky Mountain National Park. Oh, it's free. Really? Mm -hmm. It's free to go in there. Yeah. Don't most national parks cost something? Yes. Really? I'm surprised to hear that. I know. I thought that was interesting too. They have 10 campgrounds with a thousand campsites. How much does it cost to camp in the Smoky Mountains at a campsite? Well, I don't know. I'm sure it depends on where you're going to go, how many people, yada yada. But that's not free. That's how they get you. <sighs> Oh, my heavens. Did you say, oh, my heavens? I did. Yeah, you did. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, Grandma.
<laughs> well, we're in rocking chairs. Yeah, that's we're true. in rocking chairs. So that's it for the Smoky Mountains. That's all you got. But people can look up if they're really interested in what they want to do in the Smoky Mountains or the National Park. Well, you know, people might Google the Smoky Mountains and come up with this podcast, and they might listen to this thinking that they're going to get some information. <laughs> Now they're just going to find out how many hectares of land there Here's are. Here's the thing. We're in the Smoky Mountains because it's a place we knew we enjoyed yes. before. This is a great place to be in the summertime for sure. Exactly. It's cooler. We're hearing people from Florida and Georgia telling us about the heat wave. Thank and it's... God. Thank God we got out of Florida for the summer. Oh. Pale and heavy. Pale and heavy do not do well, well in Florida. <sighs> yeah, because there's no air conditioning. Well, sure. I can sit in Florida and look out the window and go, thank God I'm inside. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. That's it for the Smoky Mountains. That's the Smoky Mountains for you. I think there are dragons in the mountains. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon. We appreciate all the feedback. Look forward to comments and blah, blah, blah. And we will talk to you in the future. Bye bye Keep waving. Keep waving. <laughs> Why do I have to keep waving? Because then, uh... Why? It's just funnier like this. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, that is it. Click, subscribe, review, share all over the global internet sphere. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time on the Slowpoke Travel Podcast.